So now we have another scenario where we're going to provision a couple more new users. And again, we're going to make a couple of changes to the directory tree on the, on the audit appliance. We're going to create an admin container, which like the high school container, will contain um, a user's subcontainer. And on the admin container, we need to add some department numbers. So in this case, we're going to have two departments that are valid to be placed into admin. So you can have as many department numbers as you want. That's why we make sure we choose multi-valued attributes on the container objects. And then we're going to make a couple of configuration changes to some of the drivers. So for example, on the employee's driver this time, we're going to choose to have the initial password be random generated. So since there's a randomly generated password, we've chosen to provide the option of storing that password in an attribute that's not otherwise being used. So in this case, we'll use the attribute jack number. And we'll deploy this driver. And the rest of our drivers are already configured properly. So again, we'll look at the file that we're about to run. And we'll see that we're adding two new users, Susan O'Brien and Sarah Smith Barney. So one key thing is that these last names both have punctuations, which since we're using a, um, a naming, using their names to create account names, we need to make sure that that's dealt with. Another interesting thing is that there's a middle initials field that comes from HR, but we don't necessarily force HR to cut the value, so they're sending a full middle name instead of just an initial. So we'll run that and see what happens. So if we come back to our vault, we'll see we have S. Brian, S. O'Brien and S. Smith Barney. And notice that the punctuations have been taken care of automatically. If we open this up, we've got Susan O'Brien. She had a preferred name of Sue, so that's why her full name is Sue O'Brien. And if we look at Sarah Smith Barney, we truncated her middle initial, so we make sure there's not going to be any problems caused by this. If we look in the active or in the e directory connected tree, under our newly created admin and users container, we see that they were placed there properly because their department codes are 800 in this case. Now if we look in the admin of Active Directory, we'll see they weren't created. Well, that's because they're actually in IT. And in Active Directory, they chose to place IT people based on their department in the IT OU, whereas people assigned to just a generic admin were on a separate OU. So again, we're able to implement and support different architectures. And then finally, if we open up one of these users, we'll see So if we go back to the Identity Vault, the ID app tree, and open up one of our new users, we'll see that they've got a jack number attribute and it's populated with the password that was randomly generated. So to make sure I type this right, I'll copy that value and log in as Sue by pasting that value in there. And you can see that that random password worked and we've been notified to change our password. Of course for users logging in with the Novell client the Novell client can force them to change their password immediately. So here we see our two newly created people both reporting to Shana. 
So now we've got a pretty big org chart. And that concludes the user provisioning demo scenarios. Thanks a lot for your time.